Western Conference Podcast, episode number five. And I'm telling you, we got another treat for you guys. We got my brothers from the Booyah Tribe and my brother Monster Ganja over here blessing us with their presence. How you doing, brothers? Good, good. What's good? What's good? Be Come party. on. I see you guys are here in town because we're cel- it's a celebratory weekend because of the graduations going on, right? Right, right, right. Uh, Gangsta Ridge's uh, youngest daughter, Caroline. Graduated this year. She was Shout out Gangsta Ridge. Shout out GF. And, you know, we're here to so talk good. about the brothers because, you know, we just did a show in Adelanto. And I mean, me and you, me and you were there, Gotti. And mm. we kind of just seeing the transition of what, you know, what, what island music is now. But you guys were at the forefront of before all this was going on. You guys were starting doing some bigger things. We're talking about big shows back in the day, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a uh, critical. Uh, actually, it, actually, it was a critical condi- um, situation for us because. At that time, you know, we were just only poly. There was yeah. no The Rock. There was no Choi Palo yeah. Malu. It was just Booyah. Like. Well, before we get into the Booyah story, introduce yourself for everybody that's watching over across the land right now. Uh, I am the youngest brother, um, um, B.G. Gotti, from the infamous Booyah tribe. O.G. Cobra. See What it do? <laughs> and my brother? Monster Ganja. See, that's what I'm talking. We got to give them the name so we can have them follow along. Yeah. Because, Gotti, we're talking about you the youngest brother of how many? Uh, six brothers. Six bad brothers. Yes. See if y'all don't know. You see how, like, how I did that monster? See how I did that? I, 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 I did that on my own. I did it on my own. <laughs> well, we're talking about six brothers that came together musically. And I don't know if you guys have been under a rock, if you don't know who Booyah Tribe is. You guys were the epitome of West Coast hip hop in an age and an era where we were all growing up, where it was mostly, you know, it was dominated by New York and the black rap scene. Yes. And you guys came along. Tell us how that whole thing came about, because you were the younger brother. So I know, Cobra, you guys are around for the inception. Yeah. And, but tell us how that came about. Um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, with, with in that era, you know what I'm saying, we totally went opposite like everybody else. Yeah. In them days, was everyone walking around with the turntable and going back and forth. Yeah. So Gava said, you know what, man, let's have a live band. You know what I'm saying? With routines. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And with the hip hop, you know, with the you know, with, with the gear, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We we yeah. had to customize all our clothes, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because we know we're big, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But uh um, you know, at them day, in them days they used to claim the posse. Yeah. So we said, Well, you know, we're gonna have to run with the tribe, you know, and that's how we formed Booyah Tribe. So that's how the name came about. Yeah. Cause that was, that was gonna be my next one. How did the name Booyah Tribe come about? Booyah comes, you know, it's, it's a name, you know, back in the days, it was like a dope, you know what I'm saying? You got that booyah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So Off God, that shotgun. So it's yeah. the sound of a shotgun, it's the impact. Yeah. So Godfather said, man, why don't we put that to us? Because, you know, every time we come into the club. So you know Godfather like, was the one that said, he put the booyah in it. Exactly. Yeah. He said, man, you know, you know we walk into the club, they're like, there's about 30 of us in, in Hollywood. Yeah. So everybody was like, who are these motherfuckers? Exactly. Like, booyah. Yeah. So that's how we got that. And I'll tell you a story. When we walked into the club, even Magic Johnson, he goes, man, he, he's a part of that. Man, what y'all want to drink? Yeah. And this Magic Johnson. <laughs> Because we talk about an LA scene where in the 80s, you know, late 70s, early 80s, that it was a scene like, like you said, when you see a bunch of Samoans, you didn't really know what to do. Uh, but you guys walking in these clubs that you know we weren't really allowed in at the time. We were just allowed to work outside at the time. You guys were actually in there. Like, how did it get to that level where you guys were actually accepted to get in those clubs? It was really the music. Yeah. You know, that's what God has said, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, when Godfather put everything together, you know what I'm saying, and how the concept of putting the unity. Yeah. And he just got certain people of our family, you know what I'm saying, cousins and stuff, to come in and say, you know, be part of this uh, this movement. See, but that's what I want to know about, Gotti. There had to be, because I, we all have brothers and cousins that we know, to be a part of the group. So you guys had to audition for each other, I'm assuming. Because I was like, okay, Cobra, you're good at this. Rid, you may not be good at that. So who was over there designating who was good at what? Everyone play their part, man. It yeah. Was just, if Godfather seen what you were good at, you know, like Cobra was the hype man. He was the best hype man. Yeah. You know, I was still in the background. Yeah. You know, with the Tribe Kings. You know, exactly. Me and Compton Giz, rest in peace, Time Bomb, rest in his wacky room. You know, we were called the Tribe Kings. Yeah. We were the vocals with Godfather and Monster O. Shout out to Monster. But uh, Cobra was one of the best hype men. But when, I guess when I moved up to the next, I felt like I, nailed, I, I felt like I signed the NFL. When Rich said, God, "Godfather, go, oh, yeah, yeah Gotti, uh, come on, you know, back me exactly. up." Exactly. Oh, Cole was like, "Hold up, real oh, quick, oh, hold, hold up, up, hold up." And, and, and then, so my first show, yeah, Cole got me so hyped, I lost my voice. And then he goes, "Man, what happened after the show in Germany?" Because Cole, he when he hyped you up, Cole, man, I was going crazy, like man, I, I had tea and honey, and Rich was like. What happened, man? Your first show? I was like, 
I'm yeah. telling the big brothers that you're good for it to move up. And now you exactly. lost your voice. Remember I lost yeah, it was voice. Raspy. I was they were saying, hey, I've been doing a show for about an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one show, you know. So. And, I, and I think that's what we learned because, you know, now that we do shows now, like the tea and the honey, we didn't know about that back in there. <laughs> we thought that beer would go and cure that. We're like, cool, there's another beer. It should, should be okay for that. But tell us how you guys got the first big break, Cobra. When you guys were, mm. it's you, Gangster Ridd, Godfather, you know, OMB. How did you guys get your first big break? Before we we had our own independent album, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There was the yellow album. Yeah. But then after that, when we we made noise, you know what I'm saying, in yeah. Hollywood, we started doing our shows. And then there was a, a, a small little young lady by the name of Kim Bowie. She was Kim the AR for Island Records. Okay. To this day, she's the head honcho for Chris Blackwell. Oh, nice. So when she saw history, us, man, when she saw us get out, yeah. she said, Wait, hold on. She made a call and had had uh, uh, what's our boy uh uh, Chris Blackwell. Chris yeah. Blackwell. So you need to come down and see this for yourself. Yeah. The founder of Bob Marley. That's so who Chris Blackwell. Come on. We had a you guys whole don't thing. know. We did the whole Umu, the whole Lua. Yeah. The whole family brought it. Man, they came down. And for the first time, Chris Blackwell said, oh, shit. Yeah. Who the fuck are these, man? We, we, we own the sound. We own the sound. That's how we got Simon Island Records. Yeah. So when you, I mean, you guys, as a, you guys growing up in Carson, California, yeah. you guys definitely have to say, like, when you guys were discovered, I mean, you guys are, were living the life of Carson. You know, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you were living the life of Carson. And when you guys lived that, was it hard to put that aside to try to go after what you guys were going musically? It's funny you said that because, you know, you, we're here. Yeah. We're, we're, we're traveling the world. You know yeah. What I'm we're actually, our, our bread and butter is, 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 is uh, Europe. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, there's a story out there that one old man told us when we were first doing our first show. He goes, man. If you all tear up Europe for the first time, y'all gonna be here for the next 40, 60 years. Exactly. And I was the kind longevity of like, there. Man, what are you talking about? Yeah. The first show that we came out, and it already rang through all the promoters. Hey, you gotta check out these Samoan motherfuckers yeah. from Carson. They're exactly. killing it. Exactly. And we was opening that for, for uh, you know, for Public Enemy in that. Yeah. Digital Underground, and we killed every one of them. And that's when I remember when Prince saw us. You know, he was yeah. wondering at the time. He said that hip hop wasn't all that. Yeah. But he came and he goes, man, who's this group? He saw us in France. So we're over here kicking back in the promotion. We're talking about the symbol Prince. Prince. Yeah. We're talking about Prince. the Prince. Yeah. And they okay. Go, and they go, hey, man, uh, Prince is in the house. God was like, is that right? So they go, man, put the hand. We start saying our prayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. Yep. Came back. We looked at the stage. Prince went like that. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> man. See, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, you guys, we're talking about shows with Public Enemy. We're talking about Prince being in the building. There wasn't no social media back then. No. So you guys were doing this like ground roots yes, type, you know, people had to find out about you. You had to go to a show. Word you couldn't just see a little video on Instagram like you can today. Right. It was word of mouth. Like, how? tell us how that transitioned as you guys doing all the guerrilla marketing. You know, at that time, you know, you know, guy would say, you know, uh, it's the magic that we had. If you've seen the show. Yeah. Even like the, we did that one at the Ritz at New York. Yeah. It was famous. To this day, the, the next day they flew us out there for Arsenio Hall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how they were like, wait, 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 we got to get these guys on this show. Exactly. But we already toured Europe. Yeah. Europe said, nah, fuck America. We want you all over Yeah, here. exactly. And that's how our whole hype, that, that, you know, that's what kept us alive all these years. And that's what like, you know, as young Polynesian kids, and I know Monster Gaj can attest, when I seen you guys on Arsenio, like that was like the wow factor for me. Right. People ask me to this day, they're like, oh, what made you want to get into the entertainment? I, and I could say, you know, like it was yesterday, I was sitting watching, I was a huge Arsenio Hall fan. Right. You know, I like the comedic part of it. Right. And then to see someone that looked like me right. actually be an act on that, like you had to be somebody to be on the Arsenio Hall show. Mm -hmm. And when Arsenio was like, man, we got these brothers from, you know, I was like, wow. <laughs> and I watched it and I remember just watching, you know, Cobra Dance and Godfather Ridd doing his thing. And it was like the inspiration on that. Mm -hmm. To this day, you have kids that talk about what was that intricate moment. And that was the moment for me. Because I, I remember, like, you guys would come kick it with the family over there by Crocker Amazon Park. Yeah. And then I was a kid at the time. So I was like, oh, yeah, Sister Nani saying? and all them. And yeah, I was like, the Southern Comfort Girls. Exactly. Right <laughs> Chris, oh, don't forget Fiti. Come on, Fiti, don't bring it up. Bring the cooler. Fiti could be 80 years old and look exactly how he looks right now. Right. Him and JP. JP and all, man, shout out the whole family. But I remember, like, with my family, my mom and I used to kick it over there. It's oh, they got the Buya Tribe kids over there. They got the Devobo. So, me, you know, everybody else kind of like, Oh, okay, we're just going. I'm, I'm like, no, nah, that's the Booya tribe. Right. <laughs> they had the pictures with the fourth and brawl with the yeah, island. Yeah, so sir. I was like, you know what? As a kid, I kind of went up, and that was my first time because you know, in a Samoan thing, it's kind of like everybody's family. Right. So if they're right. in the house, that means that's a safe haven for everybody. Right. Right. So me, as a fan, as a kid, I kind of went. I asked my mom, I was like, Mom, so how are we? She said, I have to tell your cousins. You know, that's all you got. Yeah. Those are your cousins. Those are your uncles. <laughs> so I went to each and every one of y'all, and this is, I think I was in fifth or sixth grade, got an autograph from every one of you guys, and took it back to school. And everyone was like, man, you know them? 
And this, this is at the time you guys were on MTV. Psycho yeah, Funk was on right. there. Raid was on there. You guys just did Raid on our senior hall. Like, as a Polynesian kid to this day, I, I don't think you guys know the impact you had on the lives of all these kids doing that. Like, like your son now, D Boy. Yes. Like, we were talking about D Boy too, him being in the game as well. Like, him sounding like a, like a young Booyah tribe, like right. a young Reed. Right. Right. You right. know what I mean? We'll get into the D Boy thing later, but like, how does that feel to know that you guys had a hand? In that, in this whole, not, not, not talk about the world, but the Polynesian one especially, because I think you guys being Samoan yourself had to be something like, okay, because there's a lot of pressure for that. It was. But like I said, uh, we're overwhelmed, especially now yeah. today, you know what I'm saying? See, all, especially you and what you're doing, and everyone's on, on our platforms. And yeah. Now you're inviting us on yours. Yeah. It's a blessing. Everything comes around, you know. But like I said, you know, we always talk about it. We're, we're, we're excited about what we have for, for the future, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially with Gotti and, and, and now got Gonza, you know, he had his air, he's doing his air, and he's still doing his thing. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, it, our heart, you know what I'm saying, how we are, you know, we came a long way. But to see our, our, our people, the Usos, thrive, that's a whole different game. We want everyone to win. Exactly. You know, yeah, everyone gets a bag, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, that money. Everyone will be a part of it. You know Gotti, let's get yeah. these trillions. The thing is, was <laughs> at that time, in that moment, you know, we was more of like, like Copa said, that we, you know, like, you know, a lot of Samoans were – Especially our, our Pacifica people mm -hmm. were scared to uh, to uh, step out the box. Yeah, and one thing about Godfather, his vision, Godfather was always a risk taker. Yeah, you know, because it was always you take the risk, there's a reward. But G always had that man. You know, like Coach said, let's go against the. We're gonna go That's against great. it. You know, we're not yeah. just gonna come there and just uh, get on stage with fifty motherfuckers holding yeah. their balls. No, let's get a <laughs> band. Let's show our street dancing. Yep. Let's get a four part harmony. You know, let's get a whole full show and get some. Uh, um, some uh, some horns. Let's because he and 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 he wanted to show like Cobra said the Ritz. Yeah. Okay. To let all the youngsters know, if you get booed in New York, you're done. Yeah. It's like being at the Apollo. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's like if you get booed if off the you Apollo, you can no longer be a yes. part of that. Yeah. So when 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 the, the time the boys performed at the Ritz, Ice T goes, Godfather, let me announce y'all to come out. Yeah. Also, Ice came. He had his red hat. He said, I'd like to introduce these brothers, boo -boo, six bad brothers from uh, Carson County. We know L.A. Yeah. You know, the life of the street. They came out. But see, well, even Ice will even say, you know, and I'll quote my brother Ice, shout out to Ice-T. When they seen the show, these guys had two two shows the way him and Rick, they put together. Yeah. First, they came out with the gangster suits, the double breast, the brim. Yeah. And then the band would break down to some people with Monster O on the band. Oh, Monster O so bad on After that After the base. people, uh, era, just a good to a 10 second, Cobra and all the boys go back out, come back with the khaki suit, county jacket, county jackets. the war braids, the brownies, the biscuits. And they were like, God. There was a damn. method to the madness, Cobra. Damn. There was a method to the madness because I think that is what caught the eye of the mainstream. That's right. If I say, I mean, like I said, it, it was a different time back then. It was there was no Facebook lives, no, there was right. no Instagram lives. No, you guys were coming up with these and saying, "Okay, whenever we get on the stage, this is us." Right. And I think it kind of resonated with the world because you had people that was in the hood in Carson, you had people that was in the hood all over the world yeah. that could kind of like relate to you guys mm -hmm. right. to be like, "I've been in those khakis, I've right. been in those gangster yeah, exactly. right. outfits," but then to see you guys bring the P Funk element to it, right? That right there because no, it just didn't come from nowhere. No. Carver, tell us how it was this is a musical family we're talking about. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, like, like, you know, we started our, our thing from dancing. Yeah. But actually, we, we did a song with, on our second album with, uh, with uh, George Clinton and the trash called High Signing on the Funk. Mm -hmm. Man. To see him Man. in the studio with Godfather, and I was, you know, me and Godfather, we were kind of like, damn. Oh, and, he went there and he said, he said hey, hey, Godfather, smell my finger. We said, God, damn, <laughs> fuck <laughs> it, that guy's in it. And this is George Clinton. <laughs> this is George Clinton. And then on the second one, I said, we had the one with, uh, Rick, Rick, James. with Rick James. Yeah. We have, it's, and that trash called All Up in That P Funk. Yeah. And I remember he told Come me. Come on, man. Who can say that? Right. Come on, man. I'm sitting here. On, you know, man. who can say George Clinton and Rick James? Rick James. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, just them two giants you know, yeah. that, are, that we used to look at actually doing with us, it was an honor, man. Yeah. It was, it was like, oh, game, game over. Game yeah, over. When, when George Clinton, he blessed us with the flag of P Funk. Yeah. He told Ray Godfather, all the brothers, he goes, I'm going to bless you guys because remember in the studio, he wanted like, uh, we had to get like the whole studio had to be with candles. Oh, so that'd be a yeah. mood set. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys ever watched the movie Five Heartbeats. Yeah. Oh, have okay, I? Remember that studio that that was yes. recorded? That's a real studio called Cold Studio. And that was the studio you guys were in. We, we recorded yeah. our second album. Come so, on, man. So oh. what we did, Godfather got all the candles, but he wanted like about ten girls. Yeah. So we had to call one of the homies. They came. 
some fine girls just and then you the gotta lights. set the mood, right, Cobra? Yeah. I have a feeling that was Cobra's yeah. doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cobra's like, we need ten <laughs> girls. <laughs> you know, that part. Let's you, go. Know, <laughs> you know, you know, Cobra. You know, Cobra's name was all over Hollywood. I've been for my brother. You know, but when he gave us the blessing of the P phone, he said, you know, it was to Godfather, to Cole, even my older brothers, because we grew up in the in that P phone era. You know, yeah. from the dancing to our music, it was like, man, it was like someone just blessed us, and that's what it was like, man. George Clinton just blessed. He goes now. That's what Rich said. It's all in the cracking. That's what made you guys credible too. Like when you're getting the blessings from yeah. these artists, right. like a George Clinton, yeah. like a Rick James, that shows your credibility across the board to be like, look, these cats. They think they're just no ordinary cats. No, these are these are artists that are kind of like we're in studio with George Clinton, with yes. Rick James, and that right there is like you know, kind of getting that cosign. For like you don't get that easy yeah. these days. That's right. No. You don't get the cosign easy either. The funniest part, Big Body, when we did that album. You know, it's called Good Time. It's in the, it, it, you know, we're going to bring it back out. Yeah. A lot of people are asking. I mean, I got fans asking for Mama Dears. So we have a song on there. This was the first song, hip hop, that was over a, 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 a feature on there. Oh, no wow. rapper ever did a feature yet. Yeah, yeah. So Godfather yeah. had an idea, said, let's do uh, Booyah, Ice T, Kid Frost, Ice Cube, and King T. Legends. He was like, I got to get on this song. Yeah. So Q told bro, uh, Red, Red, King's child. We were like, nah, it's already blocked. Was, yeah, yeah. So God was like, nah, let King on it. Fuck it, you know, let, let's do it. Yeah. So when Q came, did his part, everyone laid his part. Ice T laid it, Kid Frost for the Mets kids, Red laid it. So we all laid it, right? And it was a song called Celebrate. Yeah. So when Ice Cube came and you know, he came and laid his part, we just finished the video with King T, um, um, uh, Risky Business. The one yeah, that, so yep, we, yep. So Q said, Red, I'm ready, let's roll. He goes, I'm ready to write this. So we were all like, oh, shit. So we went back to that studio. When Q said, there was a part when he said, uh, coming from Samoa. He in his know, rap. He didn't know we were inside the studio watching him. Yeah. He was going we, crazy. we were going so crazy, Giz, Cop the Giz broke the door. <laughs> he said, who from? He was like, just hearing a platinum artist oh, yeah. that's not Samoan yeah. say, you know, uh, straight from Samoa, man. It was like, man. And Lord. to this day, people are still asking, where is that track? Well, I, I go, I go, Relaxed. We got the ninth album coming out. We're gonna be doing Ridge Last, a tribute to Godfather and uh, Gangster Red, and that's gonna that's gonna be the last album Booyah's ever gonna do. I can't look at Gotti seriously when he says relax. It takes me back to the Italian oh, job. It takes, me, <laughs> it takes me back to the movie. Every time I talk to the Oos and he says relax, I feel like the little bitch he told to go sit down and relax, relax, baby. Because if you guys didn't know, Gotti and Cobra are both in the Italian job with Mark Wahlberg, and that line it runs synonymous. So instead of you saying relax, I was like, hold on, let me. Not, I ain't be no bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out to F. Gary Gray, my boy Gary. F. Gary Gray. Oh, See, brother, but man. you guys made it cool to be cool with the ooses. Right. Um, it's crazy because I just did a show with Ice Cube at Cali Roots. Right. And uh, he came by, and as soon as we, he was doing his set, I was bringing him off. And he said, all right, what's up, Ooze? Like, that had run synonymous with, with these brothers. You know right. what I mean? Come on, He bro. wouldn't right. know about the oozes. So you see how it goes full circle. Right. I'm in Cali Roots and Monterey doing a four-day festival. And Ice Cube just finished with Dub C and just got off the stage. And I'm bringing him off saying, give it up for Ice Cube. And he's like, what's up, Ooze? And I'm like, he wouldn't know what Ooze is unless he was rocking with right. Booyah Tribe. Right. Come on, baby. And that just shows you how legendary the, what BYT was. Like, mm -hmm. when you when you talk about the, fun, the, the flag that George Clinton, yeah. it makes me think about the new Funky Nation flag. Yeah, yeah. Flag, When you guys yeah. had it on the front where yeah, yes. that was kind of like, that was the wave of another flag. That's it. Yeah. And that yeah. right there, like, you know, that was a poster in a lot of us Polynesian kids' rooms because we looked up to that. Um, now you could just put a song on SoundCloud and, you know, over there, you, right. you guys were making albums. Right. You guys were seeing if the albums were going to go and like, come on, man. You guys had Gangsta Rid in there with one of the dopest, like, people don't realize how dope of a lyricist that Rid was. Right. He got with the best of them. And when yeah. I say he got with the best of them, I have to ask y'all about this collaboration with Eminem. Mm. Because the Eminem collaboration came about, and I was like, come on, man. Right. And then you hear Rid's part, I'm like, shit! <laughs> I was like, M who? Right. When you hear Rid on that, on that, like... I always wanted to ask Rid, was he ever intimidated? But I can already tell you, because Rid didn't give a fuck about none of these he dudes over there. Straight up. So when you hear that Eminem track, the 911 track, I'm just like, bro, tell me, but you, you guys already knew that that, lyric, that it, lyricism was going to take him a long way. It's funny you said that because Rid was a type like, he, he didn't, he, even though the rap, not putting him down, yeah. but he always said, nah, you ain't got nothing on me. Yeah. I remember we was, he knew. I remember we was at the club. And I went to the bar and I came back. One of them go, hey man, your brother Riz trip. We thought he was tripping. And we looked over there, it was Rid rapping at Nas, and he got oh, all man. his goons. Yeah. <laughs> flowing it. And I and I was going, and the whole Not even tripping. Quiet. Yeah. And, and then Nas goes, damn, boy, man, what's up? You, you know, but that's how Rid was. He goes, man, yeah. I'm going to let these motherfuckers know. 
Yeah. And that's we got to tell all our young rappers, you got to have that fierce. Give a fuck. You got to have that mentality. That's right. real. Because that's we're all, talking about it mentality. didn't matter if it was Nas. You know, you better. You know. Oh, we're going to talk about Monster <laughs> Men. But we got, like, I, I've always talked about that where anywhere we were, especially in Vegas later on too with Rid, any artist, he'd walk right up to him. Like, there was no hesitation in Rid's game. Mm-hmm. He would go up there. If you wanted to hear a couple of bars, you was going to hear some bars. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about, he kind of nonchalantly just threw Nas in there like it was nothing. But we're talking about <laughs> Nas, <laughs> one of the God MCs yes. of New York. Exactly. That, that Rid was over there saying, okay. Fuck all that. Listen to this. And I think that's one thing, man. God rest his soul to our brother Gangster Red, man. But him, the brother Godfather, and just to have that with you guys, it wasn't just one. It was it was Gangster Red had that. You had the dancing and the right. hype going on. Right. Everyone played their position. Right. So as it went on in, in life, like I see Dub C and them doing now, like the older you guys get, were you guys saying, okay, we need to do more shows? Because I remember you guys started, we did a show in, in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, that was the uh, the ragamuffin. Yeah, the ragamuffin. Yeah, shout Ooh. out to the New Zealand family, the Booyah Tribe, sixty two, Don Ray, Don, Don Ray, Ray family, D, man. Yeah, where they, you know, Raz, Big Sav, you know, Savage. Oh, uh, happy birthday to uh, OG Champ, you know, Big Champ. Yeah, what's man, up? that's the whole family Champ. out there. Yeah, so you know, we love New Zealand. New Zealand was actually like a eye opener for us. Yeah, our first time going there, because when we got out there, it, the Lofa was there, man. Yeah, because yeah. we, we were like, this is our people. Yeah. This is us. This is us. And you know right away, too, because we kind of have a good sixth sense. If it's fake, it's fake. Yes. Right. If it's yes. real, I love it. if it's real love, yes. we kind of like, okay, we want to go all out for they're going to show yes. up like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, us landing on that, that airport, man, it was like when Selena came to the, the mall. <laughs> exactly. Right. Every Simone was running from the janitor. So, like, no, hey, booyo. Yeah. <laughs> they were running to the front trying to take pictures with us. And then when we got out there to the door, right when the door opened, they had a big old church. They had a... Uh, one of the the, the, the all boys school dads, they had a Fife Fial, a chief. Yeah, they were just, we were like, oh, damn. Yeah, you were like, oh, this is some real oh, deal. This shit, real right? deal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, and because they you know they were saying, like, wow, first time the Booyah tribe touched the Malai of, uh, yeah. of uh, New Zealand, you know. So, you know, and New Zealand was, we always had love for them because, you know, I even see the, I, you know, I love their comments to us because, you know, we, you know we, we, we get a lot of politics here in the yeah. States. Even Absolutely. With our own, with our, even with our own people. Especially with our own people. Our own Shit. people, you know. <laughs> but when you see those New Zealand comments, yeah. you know, it, it makes you like, wow, you know, like, it was worth it, man. Yeah. You know, that's, right. that's why, you know, when, when Rid and, and Gons went out there, it, it, it was love when we went out. Me, Cole, God, like, we even said, this is our our best tour. Even though exactly. Europe, Japan, yeah. we've been all over the world. But us going there, where this is our people. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and you know. And it's always harder to impress our people. Yes. You know what I mean? Especially yes, in this yes. business. It's like you can get everybody else, all the nationalities. But when you get to our people, they're the most critical. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, shit, they didn't work out this week, did they? <laughs> like, oh, shut your fat ass up, too. <laughs> it's funny you said that. I'll just tell you this. I'll just tell you this. Gangsta Rid always said this. You know, when because when, when Rid used to come out, you know, he's always G down. Yeah. You know, he goes, see, when your shirt's wrinkled, it takes one. Who's going to say it, man? <laughs> oh, yeah. Who your shirt was wrinkled. Exactly. See? Because they'll find, they'll any, find negative any negative little thing about it. Really, exactly. Really, you said, that's why you got to be all on cue. You got to be creased crease down. Your crease shoe, down. Got to be clean. Your hair got to be break. See, and that's something from Red that you youngsters of today need to take. Like, you know, you're going to get critiqued. So don't give them too much to critique. Exactly. Um, especially, you know, down to being creased up and you have one man. wrinkle. Any wrinkle is going to be something for them to talk shit about. Exactly. Right? And, 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 you know, and I take that from Rib because he was always creased up. Yeah. He was always made sure he had, he was G'd up from the flow up. Man. And made sure he did his I thing. I just went around the store to the corner to get his cigarettes. I go, where you going? To the store all braided? All I'm like, <laughs> you just going to the store. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Master Ganja, tell us how you got involved with the whole Booyah Tribe uh, family. Oh, that's family right there, man. Yeah. I'm from uh, Happy Valley in Carson, Ooh. you know, born and raised, so... I, I grew up, everything you, uh, you was talking about, I grew up watching them when I was yeah. real young. Yeah, so been there from the jump. So when you decided to get get on the mic, that was definitely an influence for you. Oh, yeah. Godfather was like, man, you got it. You know what I'm saying? And then he paired me up with Red and then uh, The Usual Suspects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, Samoa Mafia records. Man, shout out Samoa Mafia. But, but, but you know, little, little, little tip of information, Monster, you just going to downplay this platinum record you got? <laughs> Come on, we gotta tell the people. That, I like how you're so humble. Yeah. We are humble, no, but don't right. get it twisted either. Monster, right. please tell the people you, you are a platinum artist. Well, hello. Man. Come on. Yeah, I'm a platinum artist. Yeah. <laughs> See, go on, say yeah, with the chest is, out. Yeah. This, is, this is love with Jay Book. Yeah. But you know, like we said, if it wasn't for, 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 Absolutely. for the family, 
Yeah, we wouldn't have no identity like that. Mm. Yeah. And I think that goes back because artists like Monster Ganja and like the up and coming Polynesian artists yeah. that we had out there. I mean, it's it's not it's not easy. No. I think it's easier yeah. now with yeah. social media. Oh, yeah. I All think right. because there's so much marketing and stuff, free marketing, that right. you know, back in the day you guys had to pay for it. There had to be a marketing <laughs> yeah. budget. That's it. And they don't have those marketing budgets, but now right. you have Social media, you have TikToks, you have the the Instagrams, the Twitters, and all that, where you can put all your stuff out there for free, and that's like free publicity. I remember we was passing out flyers yeah, to right, a party. Right. Mm -hmm. This is like to a concert. Like we, I think us doing that gained the respect of us saying, "Okay, you kids ain't really doing it how nah. we did." No. And I, we're talking about how we did. Like you guys had it harder than anybody because you guys came from an era where it was MTV, where they played music videos, yeah. right. where you guys had Psycho Funk on the Psycho Funk, one of the dopest. Who directed that video, Cobra? Uh, Oh, was that F. Gary Gray? Uh, no, it was uh, the, the producer. Yeah. I forgot. Ian Fletcher? Yeah, Ian Fletcher. Wow. Well, it was produced by Tony G. Come on, yeah. man. Yeah. And I remember coming over to school and I'm seeing that cycle for it. had it all in white, black and white. <laughs> and you guys were up in there, had the Booyah braids. Tell us where the Booyah oh, braids came about. Oh, but actually, Godfather visioned a lot of the stuff of, you know, so having, he did a lot of the vision boards. Having on. the cycle fun of the ward. You know, so each brother had a different. That's why he said Psycho One. Yeah, it showed Kobo going crazy, wow. Monster hitting the door, Roscoe Big Murder One. So each brother had a different kind of character in the in the ward. So again, and, Rick, God, and Rick came up with that. Yeah, no, Godfather. Godfather came up with Godfather that. Vision, you know what? Come on, man, that's yeah, that you know visionary. Going to a, that's why if, you, if people don't know when the door closes. You know, it says the war, the number. Yeah. It said 187. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's real. Hey, that's real. heavy. <laughs> that's rude. Go check out that video on YouTube because yeah, I'm telling you that Psycho, Psycho Funk. Funk video, they had the raid. The raid video you guys shot where in San Francisco? I think at the town. No, yeah, yeah, no, it was a wayside, real, wayside a real jail. Okay, okay, yeah. Wayside, wayside prison. Nice. And we, and we want, we even bring our own weights into for, for for the you know for the set. Yeah. And everybody in the prison was like, eh, just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The warden was laughing. Yeah, yeah. Check these guys. So yeah, this was a live prison that was yeah, actually yeah, had yes, inmates wayside, at the time. Yeah. Wayside. Yep. Up, up, up. Gabba said, no, no, no. By we're not, not doing Hollywood. Let's do the wayside. We said, oh, we're going wayside. Oh, let's go. Uh, Call the homies. Hey, we're coming through. Yeah. Hey, they coming through. They shot it down the line. <laughs> so man, see, we talking with our brothers the four year tribe. I got some questions that we had some people so people wanted to know if there was a Mount Rushmore of Polynesian artists mm. who would be on there beside yourselves I'm sorry music or any, just okay. just in any anything it could be like from the rock it could be any Polynesian you know mm. entertainer Troy the rock yeah Troy rock you know, the rock uh, uh, man there's it, so many <laughs> and, uh, now you know you, know, you got Roman Reigns. It's so many. Roman yeah. Reigns. Because Red, Red love Alpha and Sika. Exactly. Well, we have Alpha and Sika yeah, behind you guys. Yeah, you had to put them in the thing. Some more. And the reason I asked that question is because if you asked that question when you guys came out, there would be none. No. There wouldn't be as many as we have now. Yeah. And I think that would just kind of run a testament to what you guys have been doing for this culture, for the entertainment game. Because, I mean, everyone says, oh, you're some more like, oh, like The Rock. I was like, oh, but he's black. I was like, nah, he's Samoan and then black, but that's cool. Other than that, yeah. but but you guys would like say, oh, like the Booyah tribe. Yeah. Oh, you're Samoan like the Booyah tribe. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's what kind of like everyone's like, oh, okay. And now that with the whole like the whole Polynesian movement, where we have not just Samoans, you have the Tongans, yes. the Maoris, yes, right. the Hawaiians, and everybody Shout out there, the, the Fijians. Yeah. And we're talking about you just said it, the Jets. And the Booyah Tribe yeah. was those ones. Right. If you didn't like the Jets music, you for damn sure want that West Coast <laughs> hip hop with Booyah Tribe right there. But like, I, I think the Jets just did a show the other day. Like, you don't people don't understand the severity of what the Jets did as well. Yeah, as long yeah. as you guys, they, because they, they were a Tongan family band. Um, you guys were a Samoan yeah. family you band. It was just two different entities, but yeah. still have the classic yes. tracks that you did with them too, man. Yeah. But, tell, but the Samoan dynasty, because that's what you would normally have now is a Samoan dynasty. Yeah. Tell us about this project coming up. Um, this last uh, project we got, um, the ninth album, you know, it, 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 it's, gonna, uh, it's a tribute to Red, because, you know, Red can do music, he can go on, you know, yeah. from metal, reggae, but his passion was hip hop, especially with Godfather. So me and Cobra and Monster O, you know, and um, we, went, we decided to do. Let's do the ninth album. Let's yeah. finish it like Exodus. Yeah, his exit way, you know. Of and this is gonna be uh, this album is gonna be a lot of our friends in the industry. Everyone yeah. Yeah. for Kid Rock, CeeLo Green, you know, the Goody Ma, everyone. I'm yeah. talking Ice T. Everyone that's been involved. Everyone's contributing. Yeah, yeah. But check this out though, all you all you young rappers that's uh, our poly, I'm gonna have one track, and if you good to get on out of a hundred, if you can get on it. 
You're going to be part Come of this Come on, project. see, you heard it here first, you Come young on, rappers you know? out there. And look, there's you nothing know? to take away from the young rappers because that's what I want to get into now because right. with the young rappers we have, it's a whole different ball game, sound-wise and element-wise and just what they're rapping about now. You know, when you guys were rapping, you guys were rapping up how you guys were raised and everything, right. which is still kind of the same aspect. It's just a little different. Um, you know, I like to call it mumble rap, the, you know, the, the, the age of the Kodak That's what used to call it. And, you know, rap. and I talked to Rid about that one yeah. time. He was like, oh, yeah, that, that ain't rap. Yeah. And, you know, and what you guys have done to the game, how does something that an artist that comes up to you that kind of has that mumble rap mentality, if someone came up to Cobra and said, how do I get on, but you don't, you don't kind of, you can't resonate with that. How do you, what do you, what, what's your advice to him? Uh, man, uh, I can't get on with that kind of music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just, it just throws us off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's just not us. You know what I'm saying? You know, LA, you know, we represent Cali. You and you can't saying? fake it either. Yeah. You, you know can't fake so, it. So, you know, we just do our own thing. You know? Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it, it, well, like, Cole, well, I'm a, well, Cole, like we all said, you know, we it's a new era. Yeah. You mm. know, and, but those eras, it, it, you want your music for, for, you know, longevity. Yeah. The classics. You know, like George Clinton classic. and Rick yeah. James. Timeless. The classics, like you yeah. said. But, when you do that kind of style and you're following that, you already know it's it's not gonna last. Yeah. Right. But we still give them props because That's it's right. the era of yep. the young generation. Yeah. Hey, make their money, do what you gotta do. But you know, us, we are gonna stick to our guns. Like that's why I, like our, our nephews that followed us. Yeah. Like you got Monster Ganja, mm -hmm. you know, I got Pistol P, I got Angel Disky, yeah, you know, the suspects, you know. Um D Boy. You know, uh, D Boy, now yeah. D Boy. See if you notice D Boy, I was telling Cole. Cole told his son, you know, told my nephew that you got to find your itch. Yeah. And he did, but the funk was always in him. Exactly. And every time Cause he was raised in that. Yeah. Because I noticed because you know, I, I was talking about, we were just talking randomly about D-Boy. And I said, you know, that's Cobra's son. I was like, yeah, that's my nephew. You know, talk about like that. But he has the same elements that you guys had when you guys came out. Because, and you know, you asked D-Boy, he's like, I was raised in it. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, it, it would be totally different for him to do like a 21 Savage or, or Kodak <laughs> yeah. Black album. Because right. so, I mean, that's when Pops has to come be like, get your ass over here. <laughs> Take your ass back to the studio and go change that shit. And I think that's the beauty of, I think, you know, being in, you know, raised in, 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 in it had to be a lot of pressure on him, though. Right, Cobra? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, D-Boy, D-Boy. What's up? No skinny jeans. Oh, hell no. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Gangsta Rito said, we 501 ers Hello. Uh -huh. And you know what? And you look at D Boy's videos, like, how much influence did you have when he wanted to start, Cobra, to just be like, oh, you want to be a rapper too? <laughs> you know, like I said, you know, it's a tough business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just got to have that thick skin and you yeah. just got to believe in yourself first. Yeah. If you can believe it, and then you know, that's going to follow. So, you know, he did his thing. But, you know, we're like, all right, all right, yeah. all right, you, you, you know, you got to do your thing. Yeah. But he did his thing on his own. And, you know, and that, you know now he's you know, where he's at now. You know, but like I said, you know, uh, you know we support him. He's, he's the new uh, new, the new today. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, so, you know, you got to keep it pushing. You know, even especially yeah. for, for Gangsta Reed, you know, his, you know, um, you know the, he can handle that. Because so. yeah. he has that lineage, Jim. But is that your advice to other artists than D-Boy to say, okay, if they wanted to ask Cobra and Gotti, what advice would you guys give us as a young artist? Not knowing their music, just saying, look, we want to know what your advice would be to someone like me that wants to get out there, how you guys got out there. What would you tell them? I always say, you just got to be yourself. Yeah, you, you, just, yourself. you got to be yourself. Don't be us. Or do yeah, your thing. You know, you. create your image. You got to you got to do yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, and once that, then, you know, everything will support it. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah because just like Cobra said, you know, if you don't be yourself in this industry, uh, you know, they say, you know, you know, everything comes to the light. Yeah. And you see, big body, you see, you've been in this industry. You seen a lot of rappers, yeah, they were all hardcore. Next to those one little niche, someone put, man, that dude was a yeah. so and so. Man, exactly. he was a, see, it caught up on him. Yeah. But if you be yourself, and you know, and, and, you know, it doesn't have to be the route of, you know, I'm going to be a gangster rapper, I'm going right. to be this rapper. No. Yeah. If you can be yourself, you got, if you know you believe in that product and my right, my craft, I mean, me and Cole just picked up this young kid from Oceanside named Boy. Yeah. He's okay. A writer, man. Yeah. Penmanship. First, natural, and when me and Cole said, "Oh, that's another okay." Yeah, you know, and, and, and he's part of the World Commission now with D Boy, you know, and you know, and then I got like Ganja and Angel them to come help out, you know, the team that we're gonna set up to get these youngsters to bring them out. Well, speaking you know? of Ganja, Ganja, we're talking about like you being still being in this game. We're talking about D Boy. We're talking about you. You've also been in the game for a while. Yeah. Tell us how do you have to adapt what you're doing with the times? Oh shit. Well, well, me personally, I'm yeah. like learning from Red. Uh, we don't follow trends. We set them. So Absolutely. We go, we go against mm. the flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. But, I mean, you know, 
for for the young and up and coming people, I, I guess you got to just be original and um and stay in your lane and try not to sound like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about like Monster, you you your season as well. Like I said, we talked about the platinum record. You came from the regime, the right. Yuck yeah. Mouse. You've been around it as well. well I, I met Yuck at yeah. the studio when he was doing um. Mafia lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. When he said, um, "Ball on, ball yeah, on. ball on." Me yeah. and Godfather and the po- and Poly- <laughs> Yeah. And Mossberg yeah, was there. Rest in peace. Rest yeah. In peace, Mossberg. Yeah. So I met him there, and I was spitting for him. And he was like, "Man, you you got you could sound yeah. like a nigga." And you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was like, you know, I was with it. But yeah, um, yeah, you know, been around rap a lot and all that. Yeah. I like to say something real quick. I don't want him to cut all bounce. You are. Back. I mean, these all the youngsters got to learn this. So Ganja. Yeah. You know. He was in Hollywood. He was he was cutting heads off on all these battles. We were hearing it from mainstream rappers. Hey man, y'all know your nephew? He's in Hollywood doing battles. Yeah, doing rap battles. God said, man, I gotta hear Ganja, hear me cold. And that's what we used to call him the pineapple chopper, you know. Right. <laughs> and that's when God was saying, Ganja spit. He came to our, our warehouse. Man, he started going. Remember, he got pulled you, up the peanuts remember? one night. The, yeah, we, we, and, um, it, he was, was making Snoop his name. And, and King T, they all used to come. Yeah. And I used to fuck with LT Hutton. LT Hutton, yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I, the homie Big Dave was like, "Man, freestyle." So I just was busting. Shout out Big Dave, man. Right, yeah. Big Dave. Big and Dave. King yeah. T came in, and he, you know, Zibit. They was doing uh, if you got beef with DP. Yeah, yeah. They was doing that. Man, they came there. Was like, man, you sound like a like a million. Yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I said my family's from the Booyah, and they was like. Oh, okay. But you know the respect saying? came like, out of that. Man, oh, you say, oh shit. straightened up real quick. Man. Oh, you from Booyah Tribe? Okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, we we used to freestyle <laughs> up there in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? And I don't freestyle for a lot of people, but yeah, I, that's how I met Yuck. I mean, yep. Shit, but I gotta ask this from your freestyle game. How do you how do you adapt freestyle to, to get on a track? Because I know it's a lot different. Oh, it's like it's night and day. They, they'll yeah. tell you like it's Godfather. Night and day. You know, <laughs> Godfather used to put me on the, on yeah. the spot, and I remember one time he's like, "It's cheap. not a battle rap monster." Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're smoking too much weed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I mean, what? You, okay, so what you got to do, you know, like um, because it all comes down to dollars and yeah. money spent and marketing yeah. and how people look. So when you write a song, you know, like it has to be like Booyah Tribe. They came out once upon a drive by, yeah. chilling on the west side. How can I come out? Yeah. Well, you know, I just said, let me do a song about my mom and dad, but in a positive light. Exactly. How Polynesians are. Yeah. And I did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I was being original. Um, yeah. And I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to sound like nobody else. You're trying to sound like yourself. Yeah. Just That's trying right. to sound like me. See, and I, and I always wanted to know that too, especially with the Booyah Tribe. Like we we see. Snoop Dogg, Booyah Tribe, and all these other rappers that kind of claim different sets. How did it always come that when it came to music, it was okay, or was it okay, or was it just something like you know if the, if you had a, if you had a blood rapper and a crip rapper, how was it okay to make that record? Actually, it wasn't okay. Yeah. See, that's what I want to talk. That's what yeah, I'm talking about. It wasn't. Ooh. It wasn't okay, especially that era. Yeah. But I think if Red, because knowing Red, Red was you know Pi, like it was Pi Rule, you know, yeah. you know, you know. You know, pie till I die, root till I'm through. That exactly. Was but Godfather and Cole was more of, brother, we want to go worldwide. Yeah. Not just listening in Carson, Compton, Long Beach, Wilmington. We and as much love Vegas. we have for our hood, yes. that's going to stop us yes. from getting to that it's worldwide stop appeal. Us yeah. From doing a song with a Crip. Yeah. And plus, not only that, we have, see, people don't know, we have a, a Crip side of Booyah. Yeah. You know, Murder One, Compton gets from Park Village. So we were together. So, exactly. And we had other cribs that used to roll with us through the hit squad. Yeah. So it was one big family. And that's what kind of got rid. But it was hard because, you know, sometimes, but Red never let that, you know, if, if, if he knew that was a business move yeah. to, for the family to eat. He so knew what was business yes. and what was personal yes. at that right. time. Yeah, he knew that, you know what, I, I'm with it. Yeah. Because, you know, Red, you know, there's pressure. Yeah. Because Red's from a neighborhood that, you know, you, you know, I don't know, but the homies, some of the, all, all the homies were still giving love, Red, you know, go handle your, mu- your music. Yeah. But Red would still end up out of, you know, go out to the studio. Godvon Cole, where are they at? He had the hood. Yeah. He still goes <laughs> back, <laughs> drinking with the big homies. He's still in the, the hood. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that was Red. That was him. Performance in the neighborhood, you know. Yeah. But, and I think, too, when his kids and, you know, were born, you know, that's what Red said, you know, that's when the, the, the game changed where, okay, now it's serious now. Yeah. It's right. not a big party. Because I always right. feel like yeah. all, all of us here, like the older we get, 
the, when we have our families and you know our brother. I think it was more as the family being the game more than the hood itself. Yeah. And I right. think the older we got, you know, the youngsters kind of still took to it, yeah. but we were kind of like saying, oh, okay, you know, but that's family. Right. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, and I think the thing with with Rid to this day, I was like, he'll never do a song with Snoop. <laughs> just because, just because of what it was, that part, yeah. and you know, you see now like the Nipsey, you know, the Nipsey hustles, you know, rest of peace to Nipsey yeah, as well. Right. But you see people who like have tattoos of them that are from the opposite hoods. Yeah, and I'm just like thinking, like, how do I, how does that resonate with the people that was born and raised in that? Yeah. You know, because I, I don't know if it's like now where it's more of a truce because everyone's still gonna claim their sides. But now you have to say it's strategic. Yeah. Like Cobra was saying, True. if it's going to make dollars, it, it can make sense. sense. Oh but if it's going to be on some old sucker shit, then we don't really got to be doing that, that no. shit like yes, that, sir. too. Well, if you yes, want to take your music worldwide, yeah. you know, it, you know, you're going to have to make that business move. And leave the hood politics leave behind. The hood politics. Because yeah. if you don't, you're just going to be sitting right there where you're at, you know. And, yeah. and even with Debo, you know, my nephew, you know, yeah, he know his, his songs are hitting everywhere. Yeah. But like Cobra said, he even told me, he goes, oh, watch my next album. He's going to go like, almost like Mafia Lifestyle. He's yeah. Gonna, you know, I just heard a slow song he did with one of the homies. I said, man, I need this song. <laughs> he goes, oh, he's and he's telling me. I go, not yet. I'm like, hey, hold on, man. I'm young. He goes, no, bro, let me get that song. He goes, so look, one thing I can say about D-Boy and, and a lot of artists that hit me up, they always say, oh, how come you don't play my music? And I was, I, I don't want to be the old dude, but I was like, Neff, I can't play the I can't play the hood shit. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like if you're talking about family, if you're talking about party, you're talking mm -hmm. about making some money, mm -hmm. then let's do it. But you know, and a lot of artists are like, oh, this one we kind of talk about. Like, no, nah, it got to be a track. Like, you, you know me, I'm all about feel good music. Oh, yeah. right. And That's you know, and, and I told the Neff D boy, I said, look, my nephew, my, my sons, they be bumping it, and I be watching it. I was like, man, that's hard. They said, Dad, play it on your show. I said, absolutely not. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I said, just being real. I said, because D boy is, is a is a picture, a carbon copy of his daddy. Yeah. I said, but but he. I mean, they will talk about he has that market, but I told I said, look, don't change it because of me. Right. That's just something right. that, that, that I'm doing. Right. You know, that right. doesn't mean because I've been seeing Neff on the No Jumper podcast with yeah. you, the stuff that other people are doing. Like those are the, the lanes you need to be in. Right. I say, hey, don't worry, Unk's doing this OG shit over here. Just because right. I don't play a D boy record doesn't mean I don't play a D boy record. You right, know what I mean? Right. So that's why it says with us, like like my kids, when they say, oh, Dad, play this song, it's all this stuff like, oh, you know, I, and I'll kill you, and I'm like, yeah, yeah it's probably not the song that I want to play. Nine yeah, youngest, you know what I mean? I got all these guys. And then when they tell me to play it on the show, it's like, do you, Cobra, as a father side of it, say, hey, you know, if you want to go deeper into this game, you might have to transition a little bit. You know, like that, I keep saying, you know, when you ready to come on this side? Yeah. When you want to go worldwide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, say you want to stay local in the hood? That's cool. Exactly. <laughs> but do you want to go to, you know, Italy, France? See, that's what, what I'm talking Europe, about. Britain, that's what I'm talking what I'm about. <laughs> When we used to tour in Europe, our first, our, every time we go to Europe, our last one, we stay in, in uh, Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah. And we'd be there for a whole week. Stories, man. And, you know, I'm going to be real, man. We always say, man, where are we at? He'll be at the, at the pot shop, get, you know, doing everything. Man, yeah. get, 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 we got a show to do. He's always at the shop getting faded. You exactly. Know? That, was really at that day, at that time, it was Bulldogs, huh? Yeah. You smoke your weed there, mm -hmm. you know, everything. So we're just over there, you know, him and, him and well, murder I need one. this, I need two, number four, number eight. We got a show said, tomorrow, you know. Red, man, he was a beast, man. See, and I think D-Boy having that for you to tell him, say, hey, you could be good in the hood for so long, mm -hmm. but if you want to do what me and your uncles did, you're probably going to have to go another route. Right. And I'm not saying the trains change entirely, no. but I think there's a way to do it. Yeah. Like, Monster, you too, you, you have to adapt some of what you do in your raps nowadays because you now you're older now. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you adapt to what your lifestyle oh, is. Yeah, you know, I can, man, I got, I got a daughter and a son, so I feel, yeah. you know what I mean? You got to watch what you play around them and all that. Fatherly kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to be clever when you write and be a storyteller. You tell them. The tell cleverness. Them, tell you could be go. clever tell about them, it. Tell Paint them. pictures with words. You exactly. Tell them, tell them, you could be a storyteller without saying some of the story. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I then I tell these youngsters that are out there trying to make this music. And I was like, man, you're just hating because you don't want to play my shit. I was like, nah, I'll play it, but I want it to feel good. I don't feel good when I hear this. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I want to go kill somebody. When yeah. I hear, because, you know, it, it gets you. It gets you like, I remember back in the day listening to Once Upon a Drive-By. Like, but right. stuff like that, too. I was like, shit, I want to do a drive-by. I'm a kid. So when you're so influenced by that, you listen to Once Upon a Driver. You see how strategically he, right? Hit Rid the, yeah. did that. Put on, Put on ski mask. Right? And it was like, sheesh. Now they just go um, down the street with a chop up. Yeah, exactly. Chop up. <laughs> yeah. Down, knock. But the way Rid did it, though. I was actually in the car, like do I, trying to put a ski mask on. My mom said, "Get your ass out the car. You ain't, you ain't no damn gangster." So, but the storytelling that Rid did, right. well, like, you know, actually, for our body. That story on Drive Up really happened. I, I wouldn't doubt it. You know, I wouldn't doubt it at it all. Cold night. We wrote it when it was foggy. Yeah. You know, we got into it with some, you know, I, you know, back in the days, but 
He wrote that song. I go, damn. When I heard the lyric, it was over. I go, and you were like, you just going to tell us on Ridge? You just going to tell on us Ridge? Yeah. Like, on <laughs> because remember, you, know? they got, you got young younger artists that are getting arrested because of what they're saying now. Exactly. Uh, Ridge would have been arrested a yeah, few yeah, times yeah, through yeah, the music. Yeah. But we're talking about, like, tell us about Chilling on the West Side, a classic, classic, classic. Booyah Trap song. Oh, man. Because that Chilling on the West Side, when we talk about, that reminds me, if, if Rid came to me with Once Upon a Drive, I was like, ah, I probably can't play that. Chilling on the West Side right. would be what I would play. Right. Well, How did that come about? Uh, well, the, the thing was, uh, uh, a big body that after every show, when, the, when we perform, after just doing the whole hour show, when we, when we get back, you know, all the brothers are tired, you know, and uh, we're just getting ready to leave the, the dressing room. Yeah. First thing to do, we always had our oldies. Always with the oldies. You know, because that's what eased our mind. Yeah. G, you know, as a gangster, see a lot of people say, man, back in the days, and I'm going to quote it. A lot of rappers just say, oh, we don't play uh, uh, this kind of music. Do what? Well, yeah. See, that's how you know you ain't from the streets. Exactly. Because right. every gangster, you know, oldies is oh, that's yeah. what calm you down. That's that uh, therapy. That therapy. Because oh, well, you were talking you about know? with the family, you was harmonizing. You yes. Was, all the brothers had the tenors, you had the baritones, yes. you had everybody. If you were off, I'm going to send you to the corner. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, go to the corner. Oh, you didn't go to, you didn't go to Pesce, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so get in the back, you know. So from, 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 from just um, knowing that after our, our, that music, oldies, that's what always, it was therapy for us yeah. after every show. Rich, hey, man. Put that on, you know. Well, at that day was the tape, those days. Yeah. So we press the tape and we just bust the oldies and, you know, we just like calm us down and then we, you know, we take off to the next city. But, you know, as far as that, the way, you know, like you said, you know, the, the youngsters of just, you know, like just hearing them, you know, like just, I, I, <laughs> It's like they the don't know what a paragraph yeah, is. Yeah, the paragraph Or is, count you know? 16. Yes, yeah, like, you know. They don't know like, how to dude, count that's bars. that's the longest you know, uh, like, 16 bars ever. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> 32. <laughs> 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 Kippy, you know, like. Uh, they don't, yeah, they're they like they cutting don't, it off early. Everything. They're not back to the yeah, elements. You know? nah. And you guys yeah. kind of did everything where you had the harmonizing and you had what right. Red was. He had his 16 or he yeah. had his four bar intro or, yeah, or course. Bridge. And I think a lot of these guys got to get back to that. Red was the quarterback of our show. Yeah. I mean, there was times if you hit, you missed that beat. Godfather's gonna throw the mic at your drum <laughs> or your bass. Yeah. And, and, and Monster, that's why Monster made sure the band was on cue. Yeah. Around that band, they had an hour before we come oh, in, me. and all we just grabbed the mic and hit me one time. Mm. Yeah. Two times. Mm, mm. And it was like straight like James yeah. Brown. No, 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 like, no, no, James uh, Brown. Yeah, you, you, you see Cobo this side, Godfather this side, I'm over here. And you, you got your there. cues, you can't miss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He'll cues. give that look on stage, man, you're off, man. You're yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, he, he was, we will recognize you, you know, if you, even when you, because there's one time me and Cole, um, we were back in the red, and then next thing you know, me and Cole lost our voice. He did the song. He goes, man, what happened to you two? Uh, and, and he's screaming at looking at us, giving a look. You know, back me up. I'm, you know, and this guy's yeah. doing a song by himself. I'm talking about like 20 songs, you know, like an hour Sheesh. show we did. Because so our show is an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So remember, Godfather said, okay, what's everyone doing? Oh, 15, 30 minutes. Or, oh, you know, we're going to go hour and 30 minutes. So us going to Europe, when people saw us, our show and how we were giving our all, mm -hmm. trust and believe, when they went back, they said, these motherfuckers yeah. get a bad a show fucking on. show. Yeah, exactly. And I used to trip on Rib because he's doing five things at one time. Yeah. I know my cues, but he's, he's emceeing it, got the band. On cue, and we're hitting routines together while yeah. he's rap. Oh yeah, and I just go, damn, he on he on a hit, you know? Exactly. Man. And when you're off, he'll tell him, he said, "Hey, freeze, give me the drum, make it sound like an AK." <laughs> the drummer, the drummer, swim, man, please make it wrist check. Stop, yeah. boom, yeah. he'll freestyle. And, and, and call my call my favorite part when when we would do that, he said, "Hold up," and he goes, "Monster, come on the front," and he goes, "You know what?" Make that mother with extortion. Boom, 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 yeah, yeah, man, man, I'm telling you, the metal, on. yeah, the, all the crowd was oh, like, "What song is this?" Real was just. You better be ready. Too, yeah. You better be ready. Be ready to perform when yeah. you was ready to go. I'm telling you, Rid was that one. I remember we we had a show in uh, in uh, Paris. So you know Paris is soccer. Yeah, yeah. It was the big day of soccer. Yep. So the promoter was telling us, no, yeah, you know, Godfather, you know, take it easy. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's going to be a no, light night. Coming. Before the show, he's coming there, Godfather, Godfather. We said, well, what? He goes, Sold out. get out there before they destroy my fucking show. But we went to the curb like that. We saw the crowd. Poo, yeah, poo. Oh, that man, was ready. That shit, man. We rocked that yeah. shit. The hooligans man. pulled up deep. And they come with these horns. The hooligans, whoo. Yeah. Yeah. The hooligans, they, you know, the hooligans don't like black people. Yeah. I'm just saying, oh, any color. Exactly. So our, 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 our guitar player, rest in peace, Bob Dog. From uh, EPA, he was like, "Man, look, I didn't bring my 38." Yeah. <laughs> but when the leader of the hooligans they came, man, they came all skinny. They came, they came for the show. So God was like, "Hey, hey, man, we call the hooligans. They're tripping outside." Yeah. So God was said, "Murder, Roscoe, let, let him in. in. Let him in." 
So we, we thought, oh, if it's on, it's, it's on. on. Yeah, exactly. Off, hey. But they came as in peace. So one of them put a gun on a 38. He had a blue rag. Yeah. He pulled a 38 like that. He looked at Red. And Red goes, but he had like these, these white garden gloves. Red said, hold up. Red gave him his gangster brownies. These are real gangster gloves. He gave him to Red. Red gave it to him. He took the gloves. He goes, Oh, then Red said he grabbed it, and Red said, "Take that off the blue rag." Yeah, Red gave him his red rag. He, <laughs> Man, he was like converted his ass real Red. quick. No, he thought he he looked at the barber and he was like comedy. And Felt like it was. They, it. they came to the show, man. They went. They tore the whole. They, they moss pit the whole thing. Come the on, man. The they're gonna ruin room my club. We were like. Nah, Red, you just turned that guy. Yeah, Red knew. Yeah, he knew. Red knew. He knew. He knew with the oh, politics where he had yeah. to do what he had to do mm-hmm. with that too. Because you talk, we, we could talk all day with with the show that you guys had. But Cobra, out of all the countries you guys got to use, well, what was the best country you guys performed at? And was like, you know what, we got to definitely come back and do something. He froze in British. Yeah, we killed that. We killed British. I mean, they was like, man, this is the unbelievable show. Like I said, it was like because I heard out there their festivals be crazy out man. there. Uh, the Glastonbury. Uh, the Glastonbury. We're yeah. the first Polynesian group ever to perform at the Glastonbury. Come on, man. And we just got out of jail that, that day. See, y'all just got out yeah. and went to Glastonbury? Yeah, true yeah. story. We got out of jail. We went. I mean, I don't know if you want me to tell the story. Yeah, it's hell yeah. So that night, we got to British. We got there to England. And um, so our manager said, I'm going to visit my family. He said, yeah. the boy's good. So when he left with the other guy, the other guy, the, other club, the, the label said, are you gonna leave these guys by themselves? This is we don't play here too. Yeah. I know they're from LA. He goes, my boys are okay. Don't worry. So we were just chilling. God said, hey, no one go out tonight. We're all gonna you know, the big show tomorrow for the Glansbury. We're the opening act. Yeah, we're the yeah. opening act. So also we're kicking back. God said he get the uh, knock on the door. Our light man had blood all over his face. Oh shit! And he asked for Roscoe. He goes, Roscoe here. So God said, oh damn, did Roscoe like he's mine? Did Roscoe do this to you? Yeah, did Roscoe mess yeah. you? Yeah. He goes, no, no, no. This club they jumped me. So God said, "What? Yeah, these uh these rugby the Nigerians. Yeah, Nigerians. We got God into said, it with them. <laughs> God was said, Sambo, call the boys, get ready, all in black. Yeah, man. So we all got ready. We went downstairs, got off all of us, all of the black hoods. Man, we like, straight we to were, the club where the ready. rugby team was at. So, yeah. So we were walking right. So the part was, yeah, you know, we were gonna check this club. Yeah. It wasn't that. We were mad because the club, the guy will say it's around the corner." It was like my tw- like fifteen miles, man. <laughs> so you know, Samoans walking like belly, like you're like, wait, where's this club where's at? This damn club before we fuss you. <laughs> and Rick goes, hey, where's he goes? Yeah. It's over here. We got there. We pulled up. So when we pulled up, and I don't know, we look. You know, Rick's mouth. Yep. So Godfather said, hey, you guys know the cue. So you know, because Godfather, see, one thing about Booyah, Godfather trained us when it was time to get down. Yeah. Like, well, every <laughs> there was morning, a way to do it. it. Was like military. Yeah. You know, we you know. So we pulled up. All right, we looked up. Godfather, right, let me do the first. We got in there, man, they came out. It was all the, the boxers. Niger- all yeah. Nigerians. They looked, and they had this one big dude. But the thing that got me, remember, Cole? The little midget. He came. You never watched those Kung Fu movies with the guy with the cigarette? Yeah. <laughs> he walked out. He goes, <laughs> and Rick could imitate the way Rick Yeah, yeah, he had that <laughs> smirk. He had that smirk like. And had the cigarette backwards. And he's yeah. looking at us like, he seen like 18 some more like, what are these guys are going to do? Yeah. <laughs> and all the guys lined up. The big one that came in, they're like, and that's when the, our light man, David, where he, he goes, goes, that one, that one, the big dude. Pointed him out. And he was like, they're laughing. But the guy, the little midget went. So he back, he goes, oh, okay. So Gava goes, so they're standing here. They're all lined up with us. Gava said, man, David, this one? He goes, yeah, that one. Gava said, boom, boom. <laughs> Knocked both of them out. Man, we rushed that hall. We, we sold all of them. Yeah. But the thing that got me, the girl that was counting the money, the guy said, don't touch the girl. She was counting the money on the counter, counting the money in the club. We mopped everybody. Except Mop. the girl with the money. Yeah, but Master <laughs> O. Was throwing bodies. Master O, uh, uh, Fapo, the janitor, he had nothing to do with it. He was, he was <laughs> getting money. He was everybody was getting it at that point. Everybody Bobby, was getting it. All I remember, I, I, I was working on somebody. One of the guys that got got knocked out. Sambo threw the uh, the, the, the midget body over the girl. Over me. Oh my over the girl. And over the girl while she's counting money. It was so we ran in. God was just trashed the whole fucking club. Yeah. So we all ran in. Man, all the, everyone looked at us. God was like, fuck, we started trashing everything. Everyone in the club was dancing. Went, went to, to the a corner. They went to the wall. So And, and the they, Nigerians. And the Nigerians, they were all hiding. <laughs> man, we, 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 fought, we, man, we fought solely that whole thing. So this is the funny part. So God said, let's roll, let's roll. You know, they're calling the cops. Yeah. So everyone left, right? So me, Big Sam, and Big Mozilla, 
You know, Mozilla, yeah, Jay Mozilla. Mozilla. Yeah, 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 Big yeah. Mo. Hell yeah. Rest, yeah, rest, uh, much love to Big Mo. So me, Big Mo, and Sambo, you know, us being big, so we went the other way. Sambo, let's go this way. Yeah. These guys went that way. So we're like, man, so we just went. So we were getting back by the hotel, and our hotel was there. They were there already. So we started, so, you know, in, in, in England, they got those paddy wagons. Yeah. So They don't pick up in a cop yeah. car. They come with the wagon. Yeah, right? so we're all, we're all belling. We're walking, me, Mo, and Sambo. Also, we look. The, the, the paddy wagon looked, they, they kept passing us, and then, and then all the time, hey, start jogging, start jogging. So me and Mo start jogging. <laughs> like, start throwing punches, start throwing punches. Yeah. So we start throwing punches. So they stopped and go, excuse me, mate, we're looking for some guys. He goes, why are you bothering me? I got the two WWF training. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, oh, we're sorry, sir. He goes, man. So we start going, they left, they stopped, like, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> they took the you and they came back and they pulled us in front of the hotel. But when we were in front of the hotel, they go, oh, they got us. They go, hey, excuse me, wait, it's these guys. Yeah. So Godfondo and these guys were all in the bushes. They were hiding, looking, <laughs> uh, waiting. Hey, they're, 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 the helicopters came. The helicopters the SWAT came. team came. Oh, they had to get over. Yeah, oh, they, they were coming for us. Everything. So they were flashing the helico helicopter to the hotel. Red had the window open. And, 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 he, and he was screaming. He, scream he goes, he goes. Fuck you! <laughs> and they're looking at the light, and Godfather were still in the bushes. So then, so it was a lady that said, "You guys need to come with us." They were like, "Man, he goes, well, I got sandwiches and hot cocoa." So yeah. Mogul goes, "Okay, let's roll." Yeah. We jumped in the paddy wagon. We got there. It was like a dungeon. Shit. So we got downstairs, right? Me and Mom got downstairs, and we looked. We they, they put us in the cell. It was about like say like ten guys. It was only two bumping, and they see me and Mo. They went, "Yeah, got those." <laughs> and next thing you know, me and Mo walked in. I said, "I got on the bed, the bottom." Mo got on top. I remember I just woke up in the middle of the night. They were all on the corner looking at us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, they're like, and then the lady, the guy, they came. Excuse me, they go. So me and Mo, man, we're we gonna do it. Now nah, they're probably gonna get us out. So they brought us some sandwiches, me and Mo, two big guys eating cocoa, eating sandwiches. So, hey, you guys are get to come out. We came out, the bus was there, all these guys, they were taking pictures. We, we didn't know you guys, we seen the video <laughs> You guys are the bully try for the Glansbury? So, and, was, so, and so you guys were headed to the yeah, show right after so, that. So they, uh, they, uh, Their kids were fans, remember? Yeah, yeah. So they were fans. We're doing autographs. <laughs> so we get an autograph, we took pictures with all the kids, the cop. So they go, man, we're coming, cop. man, we're late. So the guy goes, Hold up! So they they, they police escorted, escort oh, escorted us all the way oh, to oh, the, we all the way to the front. They were and, waiting for us. And, and our, our role manager Keith he goes, Godfather, you guys gotta get man. We all got on, everyone got on the stage. Godfather said, We just got out of fucking jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was you know, crazy. Hit me one time, boom, boom. And then the show went on. And it was on. That come was on, it. man. That's, That's the legendary shit oh, we're talking about. Everybody. So we come back. So you know, it's like a rotation of all the hip hop. We got off the airport in LAX. I see it was good. He goes, hey, Godfather, I heard what happened in uh, in England. He goes, Damn, already? <laughs> yeah, word travel yeah, fast, yeah. huh? And, then, and you know, they try to say, yeah, Booyah came. They they beat up. They, you know, they try to. But See, just imagine if they had social media back then. That would have been oh, all over and viral. Yeah. You already know. <laughs> Thank God those cameras weren't out there back then. See, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Look, before we get up out of here, I got a, a couple questions to ask you guys. Um, do you feel a responsibility as being legends in the game to pass the torch to the younger generation? Of course. Yeah. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? We, we want to inspire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the new and, and the upcoming and, and, you know, keep it pushing. That's what it is. See, that's what I'm talking about. Come on. I, we talk about this all the time with the legendary and the lineage, you guys. There has to be a movie coming out, right, Gotti? Yeah. Or some mm -hmm. kind of documentary well, because you, your guys' story has to be told. Yeah. Uh, we, we're, only, we're only scratching the surface about what Booyah Tribe is yeah. all about. Tell Actually, us about that. right now, uh, we're getting ready to finish. Uh, we're going to be finishing our documentary done by Stevan. Oh, oh yeah. nice. Shout and, out to uh, the Joker family. Yeah, to the Joker Man. family. He's Shout out to Stevan. He just did the yeah. Cypress Hill yeah. one, right? Yeah, okay. and he told me... Uh, Cobra, you know, um, that, you know, Bui tries my next, uh, so we're getting ready to set that up. And uh, we'll be coming to New Zealand and sign more for that, so just letting y'all know. Um, oh, you going too? Yeah, so, I was about to say, I'll, I'll be there. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, KT, I think you're going to Yeah, <laughs> KT will stay, yeah, then we'll yeah, be over there. <laughs> yeah, but um, we're doing the documentary first, you know, we got a book. Uh, we have a script that we wrote, like, about 10 years ago for yeah. the movie. But me and Cole, we want to just, uh, re uh, you know, re kind of just pull a little something out here and there. So there's a like, lot of stuff. Yeah. Tucked away. Yeah. Waiting to come to light that you and Cobra are going to make this happen. Yeah. And, you know, we have to because there's only, you know, me and him and Monster, you know, we're yeah. still alive. And, and, and Monster's still you know, doing it. I just heard yeah. the song with Ebony Foster. Yeah. Come on, still, man. Tell, that, that one, yeah. We're talking about the original Ebony Foster who sang on the Tupac, Tupac. track. Yeah. Come so on, shout out man. to Monster. You know, you know, we just, uh, you know, you know, 
you know, Monster, he just loves the music just like yeah. we did. You know, just want to get him in the studio, you know, him and his production. So, you know, um, you know him and the, with Cove and me and just try to get the business. Just, you know, and get, like Cove said, I like, uh, you know, we have to uh, pass it on. Yeah. You know, right. You know, you know, <laughs> back in the days, your was like, remember, Gonzo? Yeah. Nigga need to get their own talk. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Rid, you know, his heart, Rid had a good heart. He, he knew yeah. too that, right. you know, it's the time and, you know, a place that, you know, we, you know, we had our era. Yeah. And yeah. that's why we want to mm-hmm. finish this ninth album because, you know. And it's it, so crazy you know. said that about the ninth album. I have so many tracks when Rid was in New Zealand. And mm. he was always sending me music. Right. And he was like, Oos, play this on the show. Yeah. And to go back to my D Boy story, yeah. I'm like, Oos. <laughs> you know, I said, I love, you know, how you flow, but, but like, it's just how much music he had. Yeah. yeah. And for you guys to kind of just say, okay, look, this is the music that we can go, you know, pay homage yeah. to Rid, yeah. pay homage to Godfather, yeah. and just you guys as, you know, as the Buya yeah. tribe. Yeah. And I think you guys are need to be giving your flowers, you know, God rest Rid and Godfather oh, soul. But you, to give you guys your flowers now, while thank you guys you, are still here, to thank say, you, look, bro. I, I could tell you straight up in you guys' face, we're not only family, but you guys are pioneers Thank you, brother. to Thank especially you. this whole hip hop thing, especially with our Polynesian kids that are being there and say, like, look, yeah, the Jets is one thing, but if you guys are really going to talk about some street shit, right. go follow this Booyah Tribe story. Yeah. Whether you're blood, crip, whatever, yeah, yellow, nice. purple, whatever you are, yes. you can even be an enemy and respect exactly. where you guys came from, man. Right. And I just want to thank you guys for coming in well, and you. blessing the Western Conference Podcast. Thank you. Come Always. on, it's the Western Conference Podcast yeah. with the West Coast legends. Yes. Come on. Podcast, baby. Shout out my brother, Monster Ganja, Monster and shout out you, Gotti, Cobra. Appreciate you, brother. Thank Thank you, brother. Oh, Thank you, bro. KT. KT, brother. all the BYFT yep. family. Big Roscoe. Shout Roscoe, out. Roscoe, Compton, Giz. Western Conference Podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Dude.